Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Well, guys, today we are going to discuss regression analysis. So, first of all, we need to uh, discuss what do we mean by regression. Regression means the dependence of one variable upon the other variable or variables, right? So, the dependent variable can either depend upon single variable or it can depends upon more than single variable. That is, two variables, three variables, or four variables, etc., etc. Uh, if you want to test the dependence of one variable upon single independent variable, we call it simple regression. On the other hand, if the dependent variable depends upon more than one independent variable, we call it multiple regression. So, uh, in simple regression, if y is dependent variable, then y is the function of x. This is simple regression because there is single independent variable. This is your dependent variable and this is independent variable. And this is the case of simple regression. Why? Because there is only one independent variable. On the other hand, if your dependent variable y depends upon more than one independent variable, we call it multiple regression. For example, if y depends upon so many independent variables, something like, or we can write this as, as well, y depends upon xi where i takes value from 1 to k. So, both are these, uh, these function form represents multiple regression. So, regression can assume different functional forms, for example, linear, quadratic, log linear, exponential, logistic, etc., etc. So, both are functional forms, for example, Linear equation, linear regression can be y is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus e. e is the error term. Beta naught is the intercept, b1 is the slope and x is independent variable, y is dependent variable. So, this type of regression is known as linear regression. This is the example of linear regression equation. Agree is that for example, log of y this is equal to beta naught plus beta one log of x plus e. Or you can also take the log of beta naught as well. But this is beta naught. This is okay. This is log linear regression equation. Your regression can also assume other forms, something like beta naught plus beta 1 x plus beta 2 x square plus e. So, again, this is quadratic form. So, there are so many other possibilities of regression equation as well, but to this end, we, we, dis we discussed these functional forms. Now, uh, we can take the linear regression equation first of all. So, we have to discuss linear regression, then we have to switch to the rest of the regression equations. Okay. So, what do we mean by linear equation? Linear regression mean every dependence between x and y is such that if we plot the scatter diagram or if we draw the graph of the order pairs of x and y, we get a straight line. So, straight line type relationships mean linear relationships. In this equation, y is dependent variable, beta naught is intercept, beta 1 is slope parameter, x is independent variable and e is the error term, right? So, this is the beta naught intercept, beta 1 slope error term, independent variable, independent variable. Uh, we already know about independent variable and dependent variable, but we have to discuss the intercept, the slope and the error terms. Okay. So, first of all, we need to discuss error term. What is error term and why do we include it in the regression equation in management sciences and social sciences? To explain this, let us uh, uh, discuss the exact relationship and stochastic relationship to understand the error term. By exact relationship, we mean um, the relationship between x and y which exists every time, everywhere the same and this is possible only in natural sciences. 
but when we talk about the social sciences or the management sciences then we include error because here the relationship between dependent variable and independent variable is not exact or rather they are stochastic because there is difference between the theories of uh, natural sciences and social sciences and management, management sciences. Social sciences and uh, man uh, management sciences they uh, consider the human behavior, the customs, the fashions, the in, out, the uh, climate change uh, variations etc etc but an exact relationship there is no such uh, things for example in social sciences if y depends upon x strongly it is possible that y depends upon x uh, weekly in the next day or the next month or uh, the next year etc but in natural sciences the relationship between x and y sustains unless the next research the next development comes up so an exact relationship that the relationship between y and x is utter it is exact and it is constant proportional everywhere every time but in social sciences the dependence of y on x may vary from time to time from place to place etc etc so including an error term in the regression equation in social sciences reflects said y does not solely depends upon x rather there are also some other hidden uh, factors that varies the dependent variable y as well so it means that there are two types of variation in y that is the variation which are caused by x and the variation which are caused by the either error term the variation which are which are caused by the uh, independent variable x is known as explained variations but the variations which occurs in y due to some hidden factors these variations are known as unexplained variations so it means that there are two types of variation y can vary due to x and y can vary due to e if y depends upon x and variation in y with respect to x is known as explained variations but the variation in y due to hidden factors due to unexplained factors is known as unexplained variations so uh, there are two types of variation that exist in y the one is variation in y which occurs due to variations in independent variable x so such as variations are known as explained variations they are known as explained variations just because the source of variation in y is known which is x right the second type of variation is uh, unexplained variations variations which occurs in y due to unknown factors which is the error term is called unexplained variations they are called unexplained variations because their reasons are unknown they are not explained so that's why the variation in y whose reasons are not known is known as unexplained variations and uh, we say that these variations in y are occurred by the error term error term represents unknown factors next question is what can the unknown factors be the first one can be misspecification of the functional form of the regression equation can be the first reason for example if uh, your actual regression equation is quadratic and you are estimating a linear regression equation so it means you are doing some sort of mistake or error so this error is uh, put in the basket of the error term or for example you need to estimate a log linear regression equation and you are estimating linear regression equation or for example you have you need to estimate a logistic regression equation but instead you are uh, estimating a quadratic regression equation so such type of misspecifications are uh, included into the error term so this is the first reason the second reason can be missing some important independent variable or including some irrelevant independent variable in the regression equation for example if you are estimating your marks function and you say that your marks depends upon your attendance okay but uh, it is important that you should look into the other important variables as well on which your CGPA or your marks depends. For example, your marks can depend upon your study hours, your marks can depend upon your interaction with the teacher in the class, 
your marks can depends upon the quality of teaching and your marks can depends upon the assignment submission etc etc but you are estimating your regression regressing your marks on the attendance so uh, missing important independent variable is an error in it can reduce your explained variations in y and enhances the percentage of unexplained variations the third reason um, for why do we include error term in the regression equation can be the errors in data collection data punching data processing etc etc it is possible that uh, the data you are collecting with uh, some uh, enumerators is not reliable it may be possible that uh, the questionnaire is not well designed or the enumerators are not doing their duty uh, fairly or it is possible that uh, the data you are punching in computer you are doing some sort of errors you may enter wrong codes or uh, or sometime the the data is not entered to the computer correctly it is also possible that while data collection you may uh, uh, report you may record the error relevant response of the respondent or even sometime the respondent is not giving you accurate informations so all such types uh, such types of errors are uh, the potential cause of why do we include error in the regression equation so these are the potential reason why do we include error term in the regression equation right and these factor increases the percentage of unexplained variations among the total variations in the dependent variable y next we want to discuss the concept of intercept and slope again if y depends upon x and your regression equation is something like y is equal to beta not plus beta 1x plus e plus error term okay this is the intercept and this is the part of dependent variable y right this is the part of dependent variable in the part of y and this is also the part of y part of y now this is the part of y which is not linked with the independent variable in the regression equation right for example if y is your marks and x is your study hours so y depends upon your study hours but even if you your study hour is zero if you are not doing your homework right still you will earn some marks you will earn some cgpa so the part of cgpa are the part of the marks which, which is not linked with the independent variable in the regression equation is known as intercept or for example if this is the consumption function this is the total consumption this is the part of consumption consumption depends upon your income for example y is income and uh, x is income and y is your consumption so the part of consumption which is not depending upon the uh level of income is known as intercept in the language of economics it is known as autonomous consumption whereas the level of consumption which depends upon the uh, level of your income is known as induced consumption induced consumption this part of dependent variable is linked with the independent variable if you vary your independent variable your y will also change but even if you vary or you do not vary the independent variable this part of y does not change it is constant so this is a constant part of the dependent variable which is not linked with the independent variable in the regression equation is known as intercept another example of this is if this is your total cost this is the fixed cost and if this is the variable cost and this is the error term so this is the fixed cost it has no link with the production if you are producing zero, zero units or if you are producing 1 lakh units this cost does not change for example this can be the rent of the uh, land you hired 
or this can be the security guard salary right uh, or this can be the electricity bill uh, or tax tax right so you have to pay it it is not linked with whether you are producing something or not so this is the fixed cost in the language of economics and in mathematics this is the intercept right but this part of uh, your cost is linked with your production if you are producing producing zero there is no variable cost right this whole thing will be zero and you are uh, bearing the fixed cost only but if your production increases from one unit to two from two to three and so on then your variable cost will increase right so your variable cross uh, cost increases at the rate this slope right what is slope the rate of change independent variable where your independent variable is changed by one unit so beta 1 is slope it is always showing per unit change in y when the independent variable x is changed by one unit for example if this is your total cost and x is your production right so if you are increasing your production by one unit what is happening to your total cost so the per unit increase in your total cost is determined by the value of b1 it can be equal to 1 it can be greater than 1 it can be less than 1 right it can assume positive sign it can assume negative sign so we have not to look into whether it is having it is keeping positive sign or negative sign but uh, the interpretation of the slope must be considered it is always showing the per unit change in the dependent variable when the independent variable is changed by one unit right if for example this is the consumption and y is the income so if there is one unit increase in your income what will be the change in your consumption again this is determined by your slope right if there is one unit increase in your income and for example its value is 0 0.7 so it means that there will be 0 0.7 unit increase in your consumption right so this is how to interpret the slope and the intercept